this morning. New every morning. New every morning. As we wake up, we give you glory. As we arise, we give you glory. Oh Lord. Oh Lord. Dependent on or, or, or focusing on the great things that the Lord has done. The great, the greatest thing that God has done this moment is that we are alive and we are present in His presence. And so we want to honor Him. We want to give Him the due diligence, and we want to say that God, You are good, and Your mercy endure forever. For bringing us up until this point, that that the things that the enemy has done, the things that the enemy has been planning, that we didn't even see. But he has come through for us and he has made a way that we have been able to come here before him. We want to give him honor. We want to give him glory. We want to say thank you in the name of Jesus. Begin to open up your mouth and continue in the same mood, in the same mood. Just thanking God. Just thanking God. Just thanking God. Indeed, there are new every morning. Your faithfulness are new every morning. Your goodness is new every morning. Your mercy is new every morning. Your grace is new every morning. Your love is new every morning. You are Abba Father every morning. You are God every morning. We give you praise and we give you glory because you have done great things. Aya Badaba Suta. I am a man on the Suta. I am a man on the Suta. We honor you, we honor you. This moment we are just filled with gratitude and appreciation, Lord. And we want to say we thank you with everything on the inside of us. We thank you, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you. We thank you, O Lord. We thank you, O Lord, King of Kings. You are welcome in this place. You are worthy of God. He has done great. Shut 
Kada Bahata, if Kada Brato say, Come, come, Holy Ghost. I am a man and I know so well. Come, Holy Ghost, we are welcoming you. We are welcoming you. We are welcoming you. I'm your way. We say, Come, Holy Spirit. Come and dwell in our midst. Come and dwell in our hearts. Hey, Baba, no name and no save. Come and dwell in me. Come and dwell in this moment. Come and release your power. Release your blessing. Come, Holy Spirit. We are open. We are open. We are open. May you come, Holy Ghost. Let your fire. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let your fire fall. Lift up your voice and say, Come. I want to hear the church call out the name of the Lord. Say, Come, Holy Spirit, be great. Come, Holy, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, let your fire, let your fire, let your fire. I want to hear the church proclaim it, proclaim it, make it personal. Say, Come, come, oh. I don't hear your voices. Spirit, let your fire. Welcome in, into your heart, into your own heart. It is easy to just generalize the whole thing and say, God, come, Holy Spirit. Come and change my life, oh God. Come and change my life, oh God. Come and touch me, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost. One more time. Say, come, Holy Spirit. Come. We welcome you, Jesus. We welcome you. Come and get rid of any power that is in here that is not of you. Come, Holy Oh, 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 Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, you are welcome. You are welcome. You are welcome. We welcome you today as we prepare ourselves to dine with you. Come, Holy Ghost. Come, Holy Ghost. everything that we're about to do today in the hands of the Lord. We have come to then before him. We want to focus on the sacrifice that he has made on the cross for us each and every day. It's like God is, is, is dying again and again and again. But he died once and for all for our sins. The thing that is a cycle in your life, the thing that has become a chain, a bondage in your life that you can't seem to get out of. We want to pray this moment that because of that sacrifice, just focus on the cross, focus on Jesus, that sacrifice that he paid, that sacrifice that he made on the cross. Even when we didn't want him, even when we, 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 we dejected him, even when we didn't accept that sacrifice, he still went on the cross and he still went ahead to die for us because he knew the essence of what he was doing. And he knew that later some will come to understand that this sacrifice took so much want to focus on the cross this moment and ask him that everything that has become a cycle in our life everything that we can't seem to get out of that is holding us hostage we want to pray that we are free in this moment we want to pray that we are free in this moment that the blood of Jesus will set us free that the blood of Jesus will set us free open up your mouth just this last prayer and then we go for it Father Lord may you set us free in this moment 
Wherever it is the enemy, O oh Lord, is holding on, on us, O oh Lord. We are praying that you will set us free, Holy Spirit. May you set us free in the name of Jesus. Your blood that was shed, O oh Lord, your body that was sacrificed. And you were tortured in all ways, O oh Lord. You knew the pain that you were taking, we cannot take on our own, O oh Lord. And so you came, you came, and you died, O oh Lord. And you took on our shame, you took on our pain. All on your, on your shoulders, O oh Lord. And so this moment we are come before you. And we are saying that if we have lost our way, O oh God, may you bring us back unto yourself. May you draw us near unto you again. Because no one can draw themselves unto you until you, O oh Lord, the Father, draws him unto yourself. And so we have come. We have come, O oh Lord, seeking you while you are near. And you will draw us, O oh Lord, unto yourself. I am a heart. I am a heart. We do not want you to pass us by, Savior. Savior, do not pass us by, Holy Spirit, even as you have come in this moment. We have come to dwell at your feet. May we recognize your feet. Even as your power is hovering around this room. May we receive, may we capture a fragrance of you, O oh Lord. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. We give you glory and adoration this moment, O oh Lord. We say that you are welcome. Let your power begin to roam in this room. Let your power dwell among us. Let your spirit sit among us, O oh Lord. And do what only you can do. Do what only you are capable of doing. And whatever power or whatever spirit that is not of you in this room, Father, we pray, O oh God, that your spirit will do his work. Your spirit will do his work in the name of Jesus. And not only in this atmosphere, but in our hearts and in us, O oh Lord. That as we have come open and available, may your spirit, O oh God, fill us. May we not return home the same way we have come. As we have come to dine with you, change us. As we eat of your body, O oh Lord, and we drink of your flesh. Father, may you change us, begin to do a transformational work in us, O oh Lord. That we don't remain the same in you. In the name of Jesus, let everyone say a big amen. 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 Shall we please remain upstanding as we reflect on the sacrifice that Jesus made for us on the cross you know the Bible says that he was despised and he was rejected but yet he took on our iniquities he took on our transgressions and he laid it all bare on the cross for us he laid his life bare for us people who rejected him people who despised him but it is because his love his love for us was so great greater than anything that we could have ever imagined that he died on the cross that his his hands were pierced but with nails he suffered the most humiliating death of all but because he loved you and i so much he took on that death for us so that you and i may have eternal life amen so i just want to read from first john chapter 4 from verse 9 and it says this is how God showed his love amongst us he set his one and only son into the world that we might live through him this is love not that we loved God but that he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for his for our sins and so this afternoon I want us to just lift up our voice, just begin to reflect upon the blood. Thank the Lord for the blood of Jesus, the sacrifice that was made on your behalf, because it is not anything that we did, it is nothing that we deserved, but because He loved us, it says that He loved us so much, He gave us His only Son to die on the cross for you and I, so that you and I may bear the fruits of eternal life. So come and lift up your voice unto Him and just begin to thank Thank the Lord, begin to glorify His name. He kaba baka suri aiti ande de 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 de. He ande kama mama ma. He baba kaba suri aiti ande de 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 de. For it is not our might, O God. It is nothing that we did, O Lord, that has brought us to this place, O God. But it is Your grace, it is Your love, it is Your mercy that has brought us here, O God. It is Your blood, O God, that has brought us eternal life, O God. And so, if we are standing here, we are in eternally grateful unto you our father he come ma 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 ka ba 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 he ande le 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 he ka ba 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 he ka ba ba suri ai ka sande father because without your sacrifice oh lord where would we have been father it is not our strength it is not our strength 
You paid a debt that wasn't yours. You paid the debt on our behalf, O oh God. You brought yourself on this earth, O oh God, as a living sacrifice. And so, Lord, we thank you this afternoon. We bless your name, O oh God. He come up, Baba, Baba, come up, Baba, Baba. come up, Mama. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Thank you, Lord. Even if you don't know what to say, just thank Him. Thank you, O God. Thank you, O Lord. Thank you, O Lord. Thank you, O Lord. He come, Mama, Mama, Mama. He under the dead, 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 He come, Mama, Mama, Mama. He come, Baba, Baba, Baba. He come, Baba, Suriyaika. He under the dead, 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 dead. You became man so that you would deliver us, O God. Ma, Mama, Mama. He under the dead, dead, dead. He come, Mama, Mama. He come, Mama, Mama, Mama. He come, Baba, Suriyaika. Under the dead. He come, under the dead, 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 dead. Thank you, Lord. 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 Thank you, oh God. Thank you, Lord. He mama kama basuri ay kasande de 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 de. He kama mama mama. You came from heaven to earth to show. Cross to the grave, from the grave to the sky. Lord, I lift your name on high. You came from heaven, you came from heaven to, earth, to show, to show the from the earth, from the earth to.
to him and give your life to him today if you've given your life to Jesus and you believe that you are saved then it is important that you can reflect on the fact that you have been saved I want every one of us close our eyes and just reflect and pray and thank Jesus for the salvation you have just pray everybody we all pray here yeah? pray pray and thank him reflect on this good news that you have which not everybody has. You have been saved by the Lord. Just bless him and thank him. Let your voice out, your own voice. Let the Lord hear your voice, your own appreciation of his goodness, of his faithfulness, of his love, of his mercy. For it is only by the mercy of God that we are here. It is only by the mercy of God that we are not consumed. It is only by the mercy of God that you are alive. If you are alive, if you've not been killed, if you've not been stabbed, if you've not gone into drugs and are hooked on it, if, 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 if you are not, you know, into any of those gang issues and you are here in the presence of the Lord, you want to thank Him, you want to bless Him, you want to honor Him, you want to adore Him, for your life has been spared. Give Him praise. Give Him thanks. Thank you, oh God. Give him thank thanks. You, oh God. Don't stop. Thank you, Give him Lord. thanks. Give him thanks. Let the Lord hear your voice, your heart. That you are grateful. That you are saved. Let the Lord hear your voice in your heart. That you are grateful. You have been saved by Jesus. His precious blood. His precious blood. Had it not been for Jesus, where would we have been? Had it not been for Jesus, where will you have been? You may be here and you are saying to yourself that I, I don't know more about this Jesus. How can I praise him? How can I thank him? You can open your heart unto him. You see, you can open your heart. You don't know, but you just want to open your heart so that he can show himself to you. So that he can come in into your heart. That he can reveal himself to you. We give you glory. We give you glory. Consider what you could have been. Had it not been that Jesus laid his hand on you and had mercy. 
we see many young people who have been killed in this our London I know of a young boy who had just gone to play football, coming back home, got stabbed just by the mercy of God. We go and we come every day because the protection of the Lord is upon us. And we are grateful because of the salvation, because of the blood of Jesus. And we must be grateful to, to the Lord Jesus Christ that he saved us continues to protect us. You may be here that you may not know him personally for yourself, but you can know him today. You can give your heart to him. And when it comes to live inside of it, the things that you might see that might look like it's madness, you will also experience it because the Holy Spirit come and live in you. When you have the Holy Spirit, you, have, you, you don't need anything else. You have him, the Holy Spirit, in your life. And he will transform and do with you what he wants to do with you. And as we have come here as young people in this place, what the Lord requires of us is that we open our hearts unto him. That he may come in, that he may have his way in our lives. As we have come to the Lord, we come to the blood, we come to that place where we can be washed again where we can be cleansed again where we can be purified again so even in your silence as you have sat quietly is there something in your life that you need to give up is there something in your life that you need to let go the Lord is here with us and if you are willing he will take you. He will wash you. He will cleanse you. And he will purify you. He will forgive you everything, anything that you have ever done. And he will make you his own. I want your focus to be on him throughout the service. Oh God, I want to see you. Jesus, I want to experience you. Do not let me go out of this place to my house the same way. But touch me, Lord, with your hands. That may be new. We bless you, King of all glory. As we sit under your feet this afternoon. Minister to us, Lord, according to your will, your purpose. Our hearts are open to receive from you everything that, Lord, you have ordained for us. Lord, we ask in Jesus' name that you will reign and you will rule in this place. Sweet Holy Spirit, take charge of every heart, mind, soul, and body. Help us to connect with you so that, Lord Jesus, we can actually encounter you let your spirit reign even now and forevermore. Amen. 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 Come on, another big one. Amen. Amen. God bless you. We are going to receive the word of God and then we'll pray. We are very grateful to God that he's brought to us our apostle. I was hoping to see all of you yesterday. But I didn't see you. I only saw a presiding elder and his wife. Is it because the, the venue was changed? Uh, but we, that was, that's not good enough. You could have catch the train. <laughs> All right. But another opportunity will come. Amen. And so without taking further, any further time, we have in our midst our apostle, our father. Hallelujah. You see, he, he was the national head, the, not the national head, the resident missionary of this church for some years, 2006, all the way to 2011, and we were blessed those times. 
And by God's grace, they've come here and they decided to worship with us today. I thought I was going to hear a louder amen. Amen. So, I want you to open your heart and the, whatever the Lord has laid on his heart for us, we shall receive. Amen. Our father came with our mommy. <laughs> so, we want to introduce to you Mama Dora Apia. <laughs> I also want to introduce to us our father, Apostle M.S. Apia, the area head for Madina area in Accra, Ghana. As he comes, open your heart. Those who were baptized last week, please get ready. We'll be giving you a certificate and then you'll be taking your communion for the first time. Praise the Lord. I want us to sing Take My Life and Let It Be. Take my If I say may the grace and peace of God never abandon you, what will you say? Amen. Uh -huh. You want it to remain. We thank God for this opportunity and thank the district pastor and the wife for permitting us to use this pulpit and to also worship with you. I want us to read from the gospel of Matthew or Matthew's gospel chapter 26. And we'll read from verse 26 to verse 29. Matthew's gospel. Chapter 26, and from verse 26 through to verse 29. Now, as they were eating, as they were eating, Jesus took bread, and after blessing it, broke it. And gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. 
take eat this is my body and he took a cup and when he had given thanks he gave it to them saying drink of it all of you for this is my blood of the covenant which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins i tell you I will not drink again of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new with you in my father's kingdom. I like this part. I like this part. That is the end of everything. At the consummation of time, this is what we are all expecting. I tell you, I will not drink again of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. Amen. And I want us to take another one spoken by Jesus Christ which always scares me but help me to live right with him. And it was also spoken by Jesus Christ from the gospel according to St. Matthew again chapter 7 and from verse 21 and 23, 21 to 23. I normally don't want to read this, but it tells me. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. But he is waiting for us to dine with us. And he's saying, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. But the one who does the will of my father who is on earth. Is that what is written? <laughs> Who does the will of my father who is in heaven? On that day, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name? And cast out demons in your name. And do many mighty works in your name. But all these ones are also very good, aren't they? Now, if I'm able to prophesy, if I'm able to cast demons, if I'm able to heal the sick, I think they are very good and we pray always that they will happen in our ministry, in the church. But this is what Jesus is saying. It means something is needed of such people who do this. And then will I declare to them, I never knew you. Mm. But I was at church always singing, praying and teaching and preaching. And you say, you never knew me and mess up here. That even while I was on earth, I was an apostle. And you never knew me. I never knew you. Depart from me, you workers of lawlessness. Then I will tell them plainly, I never knew you. 
away from me, you evil doers. I want to teach in a few minutes addressing what is before us this morning or afternoon. Honoring the Lord's table a need for today's Christian. Honoring the Lord's table. In 1997, we were sent as missionaries to a certain nation. And we met a few people there. I think the membership at that time, at the seat where I was, Initially, it was 25. And I went there as a missionary to take care of that church, that area. And the entire area had 12 states. Each state being bigger than Ghana, where I know properly which means I was in charge of 12 states with 25 members. So it wasn't easy. God has sent us there to work. Thank God, after three years where we were transferred to another place, we had a number not less than a thousand. But there was something that shocked me. Among the people we were working, there was one lady who was very active, very committed. If you looked at it from the outward appearance, I would say she is supposed to have been beyond the dickness and be made an angel. He counted among one of God's angels. Very committed. And then he had a brother, elder brother also with her, who were all worshipping with us. Then one day, at a communion service, I ministered then we invited them to come dine with the Lord. Then her brother was the first to come. So he took the emblem. Immediately he took it. Immediately he started misbehaving. Running helter skelter at the small hall we had trying to remove everything off. And he was so strong that he could not be controlled. Before we realized, he had taken to the streets. Naked. But this man spoke in tongues. So what Jesus is saying is very serious, very critical. For three days, he was nowhere to be found. Then one very early morning when I was praying, the sister came knocking at our door, shouting that the brother had married her for 10 years. One mother, one father. That is what we call incest. If I'm correct. For 10 years, lived as husband and wife. Speaking in tongues. 
taking the communion for many years. So the man died the bush where ran to. And the lady also left the church and joined a church. The reason why this happened to the man was that he did not honor the Lord's table. In fact, this thing, as we see it, is Pleasant's song. Pleasant's song. If you approach it with a good heart, a transparent heart, a holy heart, I tell you, you enjoy. But it is dangerous to pretend while you don't qualify. My heart desire and the heart of God is that each and everyone who has accepted the Lord as his personal savior will carry the blessings of heaven. So for the church, we are blessed. No doubt, no two ways about it. But it is very dangerous to pretend. The guy had a very profound name, Ku Bagain. That was his name. And we don't have to approach this table haphazardly anyhow. It should not be considered a routine of the church. Because anything that becomes a routine could even be neglected. When I wake up in the morning, I have to wash my, my face and brush my teeth and, and, and bath. It's a routine. So sometimes I decide to eat before I bath. It's my own palaver. Because it's a routine. Some people even can eat before they brush their teeth because it has become a routine. But if you do that, the time will come when you will see decay. Some of the teeth, the dentist will address you properly. And so, we don't have to come to the table. So I've taken my time mentioning this because very soon, my brother sitting there, are you the presiding elder? You are growing. See, pastor. See this. Means he is growing. This was not like that when he was born, Abby. And even you yourself, sometimes you look at your pictures, Abby. 10 years ago, and you begin to laugh. A time is coming when God is going to use you to win the whole of the United Kingdom to Christ. You see our papa's beard. It wasn't like that, though. It was black. Now it's white, and the term is gone. Papa is old. Please, are you an elder? Okay, are you retired? Okay, very soon I'll do for you, okay? I'll retire you. When you hit 65, according to the church's constitution, you have to be retired. And as people are retiring and growing, 
some are also coming up and you are the sum. So I know and I can discern some full-time workers among you. Ministers. Ministers' wives. Some professors, medical doctors. And somebody even could rise to the rank of a prime minister. And that has been my prayer path. That we will have somebody among you as the prime minister of the United Kingdom. And this, I know, is prophetic. And it shall come for. But then, such people have to walk before the Lord and be perfect. That was the instruction God gave to our papa, grandpa, Abraham. His name was even changed later to Abraham. Somebody says there. It's the Holy Spirit. Because the wife was also Sarai. And then she took Sarah. So when God breathed into their names, they became changed people. So I add to your names this afternoon. Georgia. And Esther. Hallelujah. A routine, when we talk about routine, it is a sequence of actions regularly followed. Mm -hmm. Sequence of actions regularly followed, like what we have before us. Last month, it was placed here. On the 6th of August, it will be placed here. In the subsequent months, before the year ends, it will always be here. So when it happens like that, some people look down upon it. They don't consider it anything. And they don't prepare. I like the way the Presbyterians do it. Even though it is not the best. But before you dine, you have to go for Nkasahun. That Nkasahun is where you go to the pastor. And then you confess to him that last month I was part. But this month I have done this and that. And I need your prayer so that I will qualify for the next one. Some of these things we condemn. But I think um, it's good. If you have done what is wrong and you come to the pastor and you confess, he prays with you, it's better than hiding it. Because many people are hiding sins. The Lord's table must be carefully participated to earn the full benefits and blessings of it. Full benefit and blessings. They are numerous. And so the Apostle Paul indicates something in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 34. I want to educate you, put something in you because of what I have said initially. God is preparing a people So the presiding elders are yet to come. He says, he was talking about the communion, the Lord's Supper. And he wrote to the uh, church in Corinth, the members then, he said, when it is time for the communion, if anyone is hungry, let that person eat at home. So that when you come together, it will not be for judgment. 
So you don't consider this as food, as ordinary something. So when you are coming from home and you are hungry, eat because we will not give you that size which will satisfy you. It is not to food you. It is communion. It is Lord's Supper. It is the Last Supper. It is Eucharist. It is the Lord's Table. It has many names. So, when you come together, it will not be for judgment. And you can walk to the table confidently when your turn is called. Confidently, you come there, take it, eat and drink. Fearlessly. But something good is going to happen to you because you have not considered it as food. This morning I was telling the first group about a lady, a lady who had goiter as big doctors were even afraid to perform a surgical operation because of the way it was. And then at one communion day, when the minister preached on the blessings that is associated with the communion, and the, the, the woman just took it She took it and she felt like throwing out immediately after. She went outside, did it, and everything there disappeared. It came in the form of blood. Wow, 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 wow. The power and the blessings that flow. The communion and that power is not wane of it is still there because it is the power of the blood and the body of Christ Jesus. And if you believe that, it will work for you. It doesn't only heal sicknesses and it is able to provide everything because it symbolizes the body and the blood of Jesus Christ, the totality of the Son of God. And it can take you to a different height. And that is why we have to be very careful when it is there. And I want this one to rest with you forever. That any time you enter any auditorium, whether in the UK or when you are the prime minister and you are going to church, and whether you are an engineer and you are going to work, and on Sunday or wherever you were, uh, you are, you see something like this, you will remember that it should be honored. Hallelujah. And to honor means to give high respect or great esteem to someone. Give high respect. Overwhelming respect. Or great esteem to someone. And in our context, Regarding what we are talking about and who we are talking about, it is respecting God and doing what is morally right, either in secret 
or in public. Emphasis on that. Secret or public. Are you here? There are many challenges in the church. And we know that when we mention the church, we are not talking about this building. But the church universal and the church as an individual. And then the body of Christ. And I've stated here that <coughs> many of the challenges Christians have do not come from the devil or anyone, but the dishonor we offer to the communion table calls for that. When we come to the presence of God, we come to take grace and blessings and what have you. So how can somebody come to the presence of God and then go away with trouble. Is it possible that somebody can come to the presence of God and go with trouble? In our minds and in our hearts, we say no, because we have had one ministration. There is something that makes me come into your presence. My. 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 That's one of my favorite songs. And it's good. God is our helper. But if you don't come right. He will not be the helper. And that's what Judas Iscariot suffered. He was an apostle, full one, ordained by Christ himself because he was chosen by him. But scripture says that he was the treasurer. Let me put it in simple terms. Keeping the money back wherever they went. While Jesus himself was with them, some people do not fear anything. Jesus was with them, but whenever somebody gave money, the Bible says that Judas Iscariot was stealing from that bag, an apostle. But he participated in the communion. And we know his end. We are not saying anything evil will happen to you, but it is a caution. I told the morning session that I did not prepare this message here in the UK. But when I went before the Lord and I was asking, when I go, what should I say? He said, preach this to the people. So I will not dilute it. But I want your heart to change and your mind to change. You adjust yourself. You reposition yourself as the team says this year. And repositioning is something that is done intentionally. So that you become somebody unique. You become a brand. So we have to respect God and give him great esteem so that challenges when they come and it is not something we ourselves have brought on ourselves, God will easily combat it, push it somewhere because challenges are numerous but any challenge that come our way, God has made, made, uh, provided a way in Christ already so we should not bring any challenge on us like that man did. Marrying your own sister for 10 years. Something good. 
do not do. Something dogs do not do. Human beings, like the LGBTQ and so on thing. Here too, the apostle Paul says something. In 1 Corinthians 11, 27 to 31. And I want us to read that one too. Everything is Bible based. 1 Corinthians 11, 27 to 31. Read. Whoever therefore eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty. Will be what? Guilty concerning the body and blood of the Lord. Let a person examine himself. You set questions for yourself. Then, and so eat of the bread and drink of the cup. So you set questions for yourself. For anyone who eats and drinks without discerning the body, eats and drinks judgment on himself. This is why many of you are weak and ill, and some have died. So he uses some, 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 some. So it's just a percentage. A certain percentage. Don't fear God. But those who fear him and dine with him, if there is a penalty for those who do not fear him, then there is grace and blessings for those who fear him and dine with right mind. And I know that this thing that is here, that is why many of you are weak and ill and some have died. If this has happened to some people, then we will not face these things if we come with a right heart. I pray that we will never be in the church and suffer. But we will be in the church and those who see us, our colleagues, who see us from afar, will ask us, where have you been? Why is life good? Why are things moving well? And then you will tell them that because you are walking before the Lord perfectly by grace and the Spirit of God is helping you. And I pray that that will happen in your life that people who see you will know that the Lord is with you. I want to mention some of these qualifications that those who qualify for the communion table and see whether you fall into it. Those who qualify for this table should be one. Those who honor the Lord Jesus Christ. One honors the Lord. He is very, very obedient to the leading of the Holy Spirit. Whatever the word of God says, he prays that he will be able to do it. So that is the first. Then the second one is those who fear God. Those who fear God. Those who fear God do not go into intentional sins. Intentional sins. You fear God. And three, those who understand their salvation. This morning we have sung songs of the cross and we continually sing the grace of God that has saved us. If I have accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord and personal Savior, sincerely and wholly in my heart, 
then I will even strive and forge ahead to work out my salvation with fear and trembling. Intentionally. So that is another qualification. And then again, those who do not do things to please men, who do not do things just to please men. If I don't walk forward, if I don't go and take this emblem, everybody will say, maybe I have done this or that. So let me rather go. It is dangerous. It's better to sit than to pretend. Then in COP, those who are baptized by immersion, that is in the Church of Pentecost. This morning we stretch forth a hand of uh, right for one of them. And this afternoon I'm sure we'll stretch that same hand for some people who have been uh, baptized. And then Pastor added one to eight, which is key. Those whose names are written the book of life. Those whose names are written in the books of life. These are people who qualify. Those who are not participants with demons, I will read the scripture to back that one. Those who are not participants with demons. Those who are in fellowship with the triune God, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, who are in fellowship with them. Those who do not drink the cup of the Lord and that of demons simultaneously. That is in 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 17. I will read from 14 down. Therefore, my beloved, flee from idolatry. I speak as to sensible people. Judge for yourselves what I say. The cup of blessing that we bless, the cup of blessing that we bless, is it not a participation in the blood of Christ? The bread that we break, is it not a participation in the body of Christ? Because there is one bread, we who are many are one body, for we all partake of the one bread. Consider the people of Israel are not those who eat the sacrifices, participants of the altar, what do I imply then? That food offered to idols is anything or that an idol is anything. No, I imply that what pagans sacrifice, they offer to demons and not to God. See the argument. <laughs> what pagans sacrifice, they offer to demons. They don't offer it to God. I do not want you to be participants with demons. Let them do their own thing. Let the world do their own thing. And we also will do our own thing as sons of God. Verse 21 says, you cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of demons. No, there are two cups. But you can't drink both. You choose which one you want to drink from. You cannot partake of the table of the Lord and the table of demons. Shall we provoke the Lord to jealousy? Are we stronger than he? So we have to decide which way to go. And I know you have already chosen the way of the Lord. And we only have to amend our ways if there is something we are doing that does not please God. Hallelujah. 
The Last Supper is a sacrament. We have two sacraments, baptism and communion. And the word sacred comes from a sacrament. Sacred is something which is holy, something that has been set apart. So the communion is sacred, meaning a Christian right believed to have been ordained by Christ. And that is held to be a means of divine grace. My emphasis on divine grace. Anything divine is something that comes from the Lord, from the presence of God. And what this explanation is trying to arrive at is that whoever comes and be part or participate in the sacrament receives divine grace which I always want to have divine grace and divine grace yields to the favor of God the favor of God. If one does not have that divine grace, if that does not have the favor of God, he or she is in trouble. But we must have the favor of God and the favor of men. So that if, let's say, three people apply for a job, for one job, and even the first two they have a qualification higher than yours. Because of the favor of God upon your life, at the interview, the panel, after everything, will look at things and say, I think we have to go for that lady whose certificate is low, whose qualification is low. Because you have the favor of God. And I am praying that Today, one of the things I'm praying that the Lord will give me, the Lord will give you, is his favor, that divine grace. If you need it, let me see your hand. Divine grace, receive in the name of Jesus. It is only believers who qualify for that. God granting retentive memory. To go about your studies is divine grace, is the favor of God. And I announce and pronounce and declare again, prophesy again, that divine grace and favor will never abandon your life for that. Where all people are saying it's impossible, you will say with God all things are possible. Hmm? Divine grace. Lord, characterize this morning's or this afternoon's communion with divine grace, with favor. I was traveling somewhere where vehicle was scarce in the 80s. And I was at the last there was a long queue from Suhum to Accra. And I was about 180 away from the vehicle that would take us to Accra. At that time, there was fuel shortage and everything was. So I saw a man coming towards me from number one to number 180. And then the man was saying, doing, yes. And then everybody was running to him. He said, no. So I was standing quietly because I knew. And then the man comes to me and says, you, follow me. And then he takes me uh, into the vehicle. And that time I did not understand until I was looking at fever, the fever of God. He said that the favor of God can search for you and locate you wherever you are. If you are here this morning and you are confused and maybe things are knocking things, 
and you don't know where the end will be, I want to assure you that God has put favor in what we are going to take this afternoon. Do you believe it? Will you have it? Let me see your hand even as you shout hallelujah. Divine grace, favor. This is the portion of the church. This is our portion. And that is why we are warning that. Don't let this favor bypass you by dishonoring what is before us. And I know that if we do that, the Lord will bless us. I will wait to hear from the pastor that some of you have given testimonies about this divine grace, about this favor of God. Even if you are not working from here, you will begin to work. Do you believe that? It is the work of the Holy Spirit. The work of the Holy Spirit. As I conclude, when we read from 1 Corinthians, uh, Matthew 26, 26, Jesus made some four remarks. I will just mention them and then we will pray. Matthew 26, 26. Jesus said that the bread was his body. And scripture says he broke it and gave to the disciples. So he was talking about him giving himself to the whole world. That the bread went broken into pieces. The disciples, each one got something. The crucibles were also there for us also to have come and enjoyed. The body of Christ broken. So when we are taking the body of Christ, then we are talking about Jesus giving himself to us, but not transubstantiation. Transubstantiation means the conversion of the substance of the Eucharistic elements into the body and blood of Christ at consecration. Where people think, some people, some churches think that as we are here, the wafer represents Jesus' body, the flesh, which we are going to chop flesh. And then the wine also representing his true blood. We are not going to chew and drink the body and the blood. It's their emblems. But when we pray over them, they carry the presence and the power of God. That works wonders. Then he said that the cup was his blood of the covenant, which was being poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. Anytime we drink that wine, it reminds us of the forgiveness we have received from the Lord. So we are no more sinners. When we stand here, we should not say, let's pray and confess our sins. Those who do that don't understand scripture. Are you a sinner? If you are a sinner, let me see your hand. We may commit offenses. Temptations can carry us away from his presence. But immediately that ha happens, we have to confess and forsake then he is just and faithful to forgive us all our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So never will we become sinners. Uh -huh. So as we are dining, we remember that we are not sinners. And then also he talks about fellowship. At the bread and cup, he said, take, eat, Drink of it, all of you. That points to fellowship. And then the last on my paper is the one I love also. Jesus drew attention to the future when he would drink with us in the Father's 
kingdom. That is the wedding of the Lamb. This one, I'm praying that I see you there at the wedding of the Lamb. Will you be there? Strive hard to be there because this earth very soon we will not see it again. But when we get to the presence of God in heaven, then we will be part of the table. I want you to rise to your feet right now, stand before the Lord, and then begin to look at your heart. And then begin to look at your walk with God. Your walk with God. Consider it every day, every second, every morning. When you wake up, you consider your walk with the Lord expects that you come to the table with clean hands and clean hearts. Do you have something you do in secret? Stand the Lord. This one is between me. few youth who have been selected to attend an interview for eldership. They were five. And three of them were bold enough to tell the presiding elder that we have been taking certain percentage of alcohol, small, small, so we can't be elders. What is the meaning of that? You have been spotted to be interviewed and called to that position. The reason for which God has called us to give us assignment and said, we take certain percentages of alcohol so we cannot. And they withdrew indeed just yesterday. What is, what is it? Have they been dining with the Lord or not? Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Please surrender. Let your two hands be up. Surrender. Let your two hands be up. And talk to God. Do you also take some percentage of alcohol? And then they will be referring you to uh, Paul writing to Timothy and that nonsense. Are you Timothy? Do you have any stomach upsets? Oh dear. Oh. Have mercy. Have mercy. When the Lord wants to bless somebody, the message is always tough. I am not with you here. God says, this is what I want you to give to my people. I know you are praying in your silence. Pray that you will be polished. Be polished. Be polished. That the spirit of God will bring transformation. So that we will qualify for the favor of God. I envy it. And I always want to excel in that. In this church, God has a wonderful, excellent program about this church. It's prophetic. 
And God is going to use some people in a different dimension from this church. And people will marvel. And these are the people who will sanctify themselves, set themselves apart. In the next two minutes, go and pray. And tell God you are available, you are ready. And then tell him what you need even as you dine with him. Sulabaka. After one minute, you speak in tongues, small, small. Don't shout. Speak in tongues. Because there are certain expressions you cannot make. Unless the spirit of God with groanings intercede on your behalf. And that is why you need to speak in tongues. This is an individual affair. Speak in tongues. Speak in tongues. Speak in tongues. The Holy Spirit will convey the message. Scripture says as he intercedes, God understands what the Holy Spirit says about the sins. So you have 30 seconds to speak in tongues. Quietly. Sulaba. Ulabandu. have confessed already so your sins are forgiven. Your offenses are erased. Go and sin no more. In 10 seconds speaking tongues. Don't joke with that one. Whether you are an apostle of God speaking tongues that, that, that one is very important. Shandarabakanda that the fear of God will come. The respect for God will come. The honor for God will come. I will see him as my king and my lord. I am weak, but thou art mine. Hold me with that power. I am weak, but thou art one.
Sometimes you scold us. Sometimes you caution us. Sometimes you do other ones. That all the focus is that we will be blessed. And that we will enjoy your favor. We thank you for what you have given to us. Cautioning us and asking us to honor this table because you have something in display for us. I commit these ones standing before you into your hands. Let your hand be upon them mightily and protect them in the name of Jesus because you have reserved them for something great for this nation and for this church and for their families. Let every plan of the enemy concerning their lives be nullified in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth and grant them the divine grace which is the favor of God. Kalai Tabarai. Even as we come before you and dine with you, I commit this bread which is your body this wine which is your blood into your hands whoever takes it and eat and drink may he or she never remain the same in the name of Jesus sanctify this and let it bring a dramatic change in our situations both spiritual physical and material we trust your word and we know that you have done it and you have sanctified it. May your name be glorified in the name of Jesus. Let us sit as we invite these people to come forward. Zeneida Waitaka Rosemary Men suffering Paul Erica Men suffering Paul Emanuela Men suffering Paul Gloria Afiwa Kofalo through the tennis have you gone through all the teachings and the tenets as um, you were meant to go through and you believe in the tennis Please, you can respond. Yes, yes, please. You believe in them. Okay. Well done. Uh, Gloria? Gloria Kofalo. Is this the same with you? Yes? Yeah. Okay. Erica? Yes. Yes? Uh, yeah. Emanuela? Yes. Yes. Okay. <laughs> then, on that basis, Zeneida, that's your certificate I offer to you the right hand of fellowship in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Emanuela, I offer to you the right hand of fellowship in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Erica, the right hand fellowship I offer to you in the name of the Father and of Amen. the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Gloria, today I offer to you the right hand of fellowship in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. These sisters are full members of the church. Amen. Amen. And they qualify for everything, all the benefits there are in the church. 
Importantly, your names are written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Amen. 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 Saved and purchased by the blood of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Okay, so today will be your first time of tasting this with the blessings, but take your seat. Amen. Amen. All right, so we are going to dine with the Lord. What we are going to do today is to bring it to you where you are. And so, if you want to take it, if you qualify, then you pick one. But we will all take it at the same time. So, mine will be waiting for you, Pastor, all right. And then the elders should help us share it. And when we have all received, then we will rise Stand with it and do justice to it. Then you can give us uh, a certain song. <laughs> praise the Lord. I am free. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I am free. When you pick it, you wait for us. Now I want us to close your eyes and just pray. 
pray specifically you are thanking Jesus thank him for making himself available to you that you and I can have this bread and wine that which signifies his body reminds us of the covenant that we have with him thank him for this opportunity that even in this you have been healed even in this you have been delivered even in this you have been blessed pray that everything that the Lord has for you even today you shall experience in your life in the name of Jesus pray and thank him pray and bless him pray and honor him pray and thank him mean it thank him that you he has allowed to even have this thing with him even today pray 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 We'll pray one more time. One of the things that Apostle mentioned was divine grace, divine favor. We want to pray that even as we have dined with the Lord this day, may this divine grace find you. That wherever you may go, if it is an interview you are about to attend, if it is a hospital that you are going to, if it is whatever it might be, that this divine grace will come and find you. This divine grace, divine favor will come upon you that you may find favor in the sight of men and you may find favor in the sight of God. Begin to pray right now. Begin to pray. Whilst you are praying, you want to make sure that if you are sick as well, you can place your hand there and, 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 and pray that the Lord's grace, this divine grace will find you in that part of your body and touch you and heal you. Pray that the hand of the Lord will touch you. In the name of Jesus, Father, we pray. Let your grace abound. Let your favor come upon us. Let your favor come upon the youth. Let your favor come upon the adults. Let your favor come upon each and every one of us here. Let your favor come upon the children. In the name of Jesus, we honor you, O oh God. We bless you. I want to invite uh, Sister Vivian to come forward quickly. Vivian, come. And if you are here and you are unwell, you are sick in any part of your body, please, you can, you can join her. We want to pray for her. She is going uh, for a procedure tomorrow, but she's having some issues that we want the Lord to touch her. If you are also unwell, you want to come forward, please come. Yes, that is. We want to stretch forth our hands towards these brothers. Yes. We want to pray. Some of them need healing in their cartilage. Some of them in their body muscles, swellings. Some of them in, in certain things of places that we cannot mention. But we want to pray that the hand of the Lord will touch these ones. You want to stretch forth your hand and you want to pray from your heart that, oh God, touch our brothers, touch our sisters. You are their healer. You, because they have taken this wine and bread which stands for your, your body and your blood, may it begin to do something new in their lives. May it begin to do something great in their lives. May it begin to change the situation, the swellings, the, 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 the issues of, 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 of their lives. We want to pray that the hand of the Lord will touch them now 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 pray whilst you are standing here pray and cry out to the Lord the Lord I need your touch in the name of Jesus I need your touch my God I need your touch oh God I need your touch oh God I need your touch oh God let your power reign oh Lord let your spirit reign oh God in the name of Jesus let your spirit Spirit reign, oh God, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, heal, restore, 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 in the name of Jesus, from your head to the soles of your feet, oh God, I pray. 
Let everything that stands in their way be gone in the name of Jesus. Let it be gone in the name of Jesus. Let it be gone in the name of Jesus. Let it be gone in the name of Jesus. Let it be gone in the name of Jesus. We bless you, O God. We honor you, O Lord. And we bless you for healing. We bless you for the breakthrough. We bless you for the replacement of Catholic. We bless you for the replacement of, 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 of the soundness of mind. We bless you for, for the healing of their bodies, their flesh. In the name of Jesus, we honor you. Let your name be glorified, O Lord. Let your name be magnified, O God. We, we, we thank you. We bless you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. We bless you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We just want to thank you, Lord. Sing it again. Thank you, Lord. We want to thank you, Lord. We thank you for your healing. Thank you, thank you Lord. We thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you, Lord. We just want to thank you. Thank you, King of all glory. Your word says that in your stripes we are healed. Peter says, in your stripes we were healed. And so by faith as your people stand here, we declare them healed. In the name of Jesus, every single one of them. And even as you've been prayed for, I want you to receive your healing by faith in the purchased blood of Jesus. The precious blood of Jesus. May you receive it even now in Jesus' name. May you take this healing that you may go to your homes and see that the Lord has done something new in your life. Go out of here in this grace and in the might of the Lord. Amen. God bless you. We're going to take our tithes. We have just about 15 minutes to finish. We want to do everything quickly. So if you are transferring, you know the account already. But media guys, can you put, this, put it on the screen for us? And if you are paying your tithes by physical cash, then the bowl is in the front here. After that, we will take our missions offering. And we want to do well. One thing that I realized when I received the gift aid rebate was that Jubilee did not get any money at all. I'm sure whatever you got would not even be up to 500, 700 for two years. <laughs> you got 700 pounds. It's not enough. Some people were receiving 5,000, 6,000, 7,000, 8,000. You could do much more. All of you are working. If you are working, then please make sure that you've registered for the um, gift aid. So that whatever amount you give to the church in your tithes, in your offerings, and all of those things, the church can claim back that which is supposed to come back to the church. Basically, if you give even a pound to the church, the government gives back to the church 25p. So think about it. If you gave 100 pounds, the government will give back 25 pounds, which means that your offering actually becomes 125 to the Lord. And that money comes back to the church and recently the national have released those monies and when i checked for 2020 2021 put together you had 700 pounds it means that many of us are not doing that we're not filling the forms or we are not registered i want to encourage you after church if you haven't registered please make sure that you have registered so that the little you give the much you give we can get more from it so that it will come back to help the church. Amen.
I hope you've understood me, isn't it? If you have your tithes, can you take it and just hold it up like that? If it is on your phone, you're about to transfer, hold your phone. <laughs> yes. I'm giving you 30 seconds so that everyone will get this ready. Very good. It's there. Okay. These people, sometimes we forget them. And they will sing and sing and they will not give their tithes. Uh, all of you, I'm watching you. The world, God bless you. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you that you have given us some jobs to do and we are coming back with our offerings to you. This is a command to us to pay our tithes. And Father, Lord, we come in obedience, in humility to give this to you as you have instructed us. I pray in the name of Jesus that even as your people do this, and to do this from their hearts, may you look on their hearts and bless them. Your word says that you will open the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing. Father, I ask in Jesus' name that you will pour out a blessing unto your people. I ask that, Lord, you will open doors unto them. Some of them that are waiting for something big in their lives. Father, I ask that by the action that we are taking, Lord, may you intervene and may you cause them to experience this big thing. May they experience it. May they experience it even now in the name of Jesus. We want to thank you. We want to bless you. We want to honor you. Even as we bring our missions offering, we pray that you will bless it and all the missionaries all over the world who are serving you and who are doing wonderful things for you in the places that we cannot go. I ask that you will bless this money that they will go there and do some great work for you in those places. I want to thank you. I want to bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. If we could all kindly rise to our feet, please, to give our tithes and offering. Thank you. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna. to be able to give oh father we just pray that whoever's been able to give oh lord this will be used to build your church oh god we also just pray oh lord that those who weren't able to give they'll be able to give next time in your mighty name amen, amen. i can see that our mothers and fathers from um, Woolwich akan started arriving so it means we need to be quick so that they can also have their service at 3 o'clock. And so announcements, we're going to give the very, very salient ones. The rest will be on the platform. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Hey, today people are very quiet. Yes? Can I have a, a scream from somebody? Hey. I was looking for one from you. Your voice. <laughs> okay. On the 30th of this month, um, I think she's not here, but we'll be having a, 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 a marriage blessing here. One of our sisters, Martha, she normally sits there, 
uh, she'll be getting married on the 30th in this room. Amen. And we are looking forward to many for those of us that are ready. Amen. Mark, are you ready? <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Yes, yeah, so um, let's pray for them. When they are here next week, we will introduce them. One of our sisters to Constance, she normally also sits there. She sang one or two times. She is also getting married. Uh, presiding elder will give the details of that one later on. It's going to happen in another church. Uh, I think somewhere in Telford, isn't it? Yes. So next week when you come, she, he will give you the details. But for uh, Sister Martha, if anyone knows of any reason why she should not be married, Please let us know immediately, but um, do that nicely and, you know, in, in, in decorum. But yes, so please do that. Come see me. Come see Prasad Nehoda. Uh, if you don't know her next week or so when she comes, she will be introduced. I think from now until the time she will be introduced to you all. Amen. Amen. Are you here? Okay. Next um, two weeks time. From the 12th to the 14th, you're going to have a local retreat. Amen. And Wednesday and Thursday will be on Zoom. But the Friday will be here. Friday the 14th, all of us are going to be in this room for a half night. Church service. Amen. And we are preparing ourselves for our Zoe conference. And so please make sure that you partake in it and receive every blessing prepare yourself for the outpouring of the anointing that is coming um not that you don't have anointing we all have anointing but we're going to get a top up amen to overflow so that we can actually serve our purposes amen we've also asked that we take some time off at least seven days or five days if you work monday to friday so that you can actually wait on the lord during the um, um zoe conference the theme for that conference is anointing for maximum impact. And I believe that you want to make maximum impact in the place you work. You want to make maximum impact in your community. You want to make maximum impact wherever you find yourself, in the ministry, in the church. And we all need this anointing. And we want to wait on God that he may refresh us, he may touch us. And that is the essence of it. I am hoping to see all of you for each of the days, from Monday to Sunday. Amen. And the program of activities will be like this. On Monday through to Saturday, we will meet in the morning, 5.30 a.m. to 7 a.m. Then we'll meet in the afternoon, 12 to 1. Then we'll meet in the evening, 5 to 7. That is, all these are prayer meetings all day. Right? And then the 7 to 10 p.m. will be the main session where we'll have our apostle, um, the evangelism director, speaking throughout the days amen please prepare your heart prepare yourself because it will not help you if you don't prepare yourself to actually um, encounter god it is important that you take note of it because we've announced this for the past seven months you need to prepare yourself for this and when you have prepared yourself enough you will see the hand of god upon your life amen on saturday the eighth there would be um, a discussion for all parents um, and you can bring your children as well onto that meeting um, it will be on zoom and it's organized at the area level it will be about lgbt sex education and all of those things that they are teaching in our schools now to our children there is a way out and that is what we want to meet and discuss about we have a resource person that is going to come talk to us so that as parents you will know whether you want your child to sit in those classes or you want to be, you remove them. And when you come into that meeting, you'll be told everything. And if you have any questions at all, there you can ask so that you can be well informed to protect your child in those primary schools. Amen. All officers, please take note that we'll be having our half-year presbytery meeting on the 15th of this month, July. Amen. If there are any birthdays, can they rise up? Oh, Elder Ernest. Elder, Elder is the youngest man in this church. If there are any other birthday people here, please.
Can you join him quickly? Happy birthday. Oh, Auntie Grace. Oh, come forward, come forward. If it is your birthday. God bless you. Happy birthday to you. All right, stretch forth your hands towards them and just pray and release a blessing upon, upon their lives. Let's pray for them. The Lord has added to their years. Elder is growing younger all the time. And we want to pray that God will continue to give him strength, good health. He's a resource. He's an, an asset to the church. And our sister, Auntie Grace, and the boys here, we want to pray that the favor of God will be upon them. We want to pray that the hand of God will, will be upon them so that they will go and come, they will grow, and they will know the Lord. Hallelujah. They will serve the Lord with everything that is within them. Father, we honor you for their lives. We pray that you will bless them. We ask that you will protect them. We ask that you will guard them. Set your angels over them, O oh Lord, to protect them. Wherever they go, my God, let them go with them. So that any power of the enemy that will come up against them will be destroyed. You have already gone ahead of them like a consuming fire. I pray in Jesus' name that you will do that always for them. That mighty God, anything that will be an impediment on their way will be destroyed even before they get there. This is your word, almighty God, and we count on it. We hold on to it for them, and we ask that may your name be glorified in their lives, even now and forevermore. Amen. If you are here for the very first time, today is your first time of worshiping with us. Can I see you wave to, to me if you're your first time here today? Oh, nobody is here for the first time. Okay. Let's do well. Next week, let's invite our friends. And let's bring them to church. Amen. I don't think I have any more to say. Oh, okay. <laughs> Shall we rise to our feet? Apostle has given me a big task. <laughs> but I think I'll follow his cue in the morning. So you want to hold somebody's hands and prophesy into their lives. Oh, speak, speak into their lives. Bless them. Speak to them. Speak the word of God into their lives for this week. Confess something over them. Prophesy into their lives. That the grace of God would abound upon your life. That this week will be fruitful for you. Yeah, the Lord will show you kindness. His favor will be upon you. That when you go out, you will see that he is with you. In those places where you think you don't know what to do. May his hand rest upon you. Amen. Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit abide with us all now and forevermore. Amen. God bless you all. As we said, our fathers and mothers are going to have their service, so if our strong men can help take some of the chairs up there for them.